Let's begin to survey this cast. The first thing I'm going to do is set it up on my surveyor so that my occlusal plane is about the same on all of my abutment teeth. I'm right at this position. Then first, I'm going to look at my guiding plates. And I'm going to try and light up, line up my guiding planes, all right? And over here, I could make this one more parallel, so I'm going to unloosen this, tilt my cast back a little bit, try and get it more parallel on that side, and let's see what happens when I do it over here, too. That one looks a little better also. So I have a nice guide plate that helps me guide my partial straight down into position. Over here, we're going to look at the possibility of what type of clasping mechanism that we're going to use on this partial denture. And the first thing I want to do is see whether there's a possibility of using that bar clasp or not on this partial denture. And if you can take a look here, you can see that if I take a bar and I'm going to have to go past this bulge on the tooth, then I have quite a bit of undercut right in here, um, and that bar would have to stand out that far away from the tissue. If it has to stand out more than one and a half millimeters, we're not going to use a bar on that uh, particular tooth. I would like to use maybe a cast clasp, which would be the uh, cast round clasp. That would require a .01 undercut. And if I look at this tooth, I have a .01 undercut on that tooth. I've taken my surveyor. I have the vertical aspect of the, of the rod touching. And I, you move it down, and then you pull it back up that little horizontal lip touches the tooth and that's your 0.01 undercut. So I certainly have a 0.01 undercut on that tooth. I think I also have a 0.02 undercut on that tooth. So I'd put my, um, mine is a copper, yours will have two notches on it. And I can look down, pull that up, and maybe the advantage of a raw wire clasp would be that it could be a little bit lower on the tooth, therefore a little more aesthetic than that cast round clasp. Cast round has to be all above the survey line and then the terminal third go below the survey line. The wrought wire clasp can come down and go under the survey line at least half of its width so as to be effective on that particular tooth. So at this particular orientation I have um, options of the cast round or the um, wrought wire. On the other side of the arch, this is an extension base on a premolar. The premolar doesn't have a very long root. This, this tuberosity here is probably in this posterior area has a lot of flabby tissue in it. So consequently um, when that partial denture goes down into position and there's occlusal forces on it, it may give a little bit, and this tooth may take some more torquing than is uh, common. So, if we can, we're going to place a, an eye bar on this tooth, and we certainly have a .01 undercut. The other thing we have to look at is we have to go down six millimeters from our marginal gingiva, and at that point, we want to look and see how far that bar would stand out. So I'm going to make a mark on my cast, six millimeters below the marginal gingiva. And I'm going to see where I am with that. So if I go down to six millimeters, I need to see out how far out that little bar would stand away from the tissues and it would be about um, one and a half millimeters, which is kind of like my, my ultimate uh, amount. So I, I still think we're not going to stand out too far at that position. So let's do our 
preferred clasping, which would be the eye bar. We could do a wrought wire, I think. Let's look and see. I bet we have a 0.02 mesofacial undercut. We do have a 0.02 mesiofacial undercut also, so we could use a wrought wire if we also wanted to do that. If we wanted to do a reverse circlet clasp, we need a 0.01 distal facial undercut, and we certainly have that one also. So we have that as an option, except we talked about the fact that we would not do the reverse circlet clasp because that clasp would be coming around like this and on the maxillary in the premolar area it's pretty unesthetic so we would not be using that one. And then the other option would be to, if we can do a bar, we could also do the modified T-bar on this particular one. So we have all those options, which one's right, which one's wrong. We said our preferred clasp is the eye bar, so we would prefer doing the eye bar. And we're going to survey these, this cast. We're getting less teeth every time to have to survey, aren't we? So we're coming around, we're going to survey this. So we're going to survey this cast, come around the lingual, all the survey lines will be right at our gingival level on these. Have a look. Come around the distal. That is quite a bulbous tooth. I'm going to go ahead and tripod it right here. I'm going to take my O3 undercut gauge and tripod my cast. I'm going to mark three widely spaced lines without moving the vertical rod. So I'm going to try and touch back here. And let me go ahead and put my red mark here. And come forward. A little red mark there back here, red mark here, and let's circle them in blue. Some people like to add a vertical mark on each tripod mark, as I am showing here. I'm going to uh, change my orientation just a little bit and see what I end up getting by doing that. If I try to tilt my cast at this particular angle, I can do so and it will decrease the amount of the undercut labial to that canine. But I still have a fairly significant undercut where my metal would have to stand out in the cheek significantly. Not only that, I would have to tilt my partial denture extremely to get it into position. Usually, you do not want to tilt your cast more than a few degrees to determine place. When you do orient your cast back a little bit, you might find that your O1 and O2 undercuts change a little bit. But again, you have to remember that you're going to have to tilt that cast tilt that partial denture, your path of insertion now is directly in the direction of um, your analyzing rods. So you, you'd have to put this partial in tilted uh -huh. to get it in the mouth. There's a limit how much somebody can open up, so that makes it a limit. But you might find that your O1 undercut or O2 undercut would be just a little bit lower on the tooth at this orientation. It's still sticking out too far from the tissues to do a bark in that particular area. I am going to line it back up to where it was before, so I'm going to get it to where I have my marks. 
all reconstructed. I have to go a little farther forward here, which will bring this one down, and it will bring that one up. So I brought the cast back into the same position that I had it before. I'm going to mark my .02 undercut because I think I'm going to do the wrought wire on this particular um, canine. So I'll put in my O2 undercut gauge, lower it, bring it up to where it touches the tooth, and I'll twirl it a little bit, make a little mark on the tooth, and then I'm going to mark my O2 undercut. I tend to want to mark a few undercuts on the tooth. That tooth really is bulbous, so it's right under that big bulge. So there's a few little marks for my .02 undercut on that tooth. On the other side, I'm going to do the eye bar because I think that you could use some practice with the eye bar. So I'm going to mark a .01 midfacial undercut, which we would like to have in the middle third of the tooth. Middle me meaning mesial distal, right up the middle of the tooth, we'd like to have that .01 undercut mid-facial. You can have it slightly mesial to mid-facial, but ideally mid-facial. So we have that undercut marked. Our survey is complete.